So a couple of things that Brittany didn't tell you about me. I've been through, and I'm not ashamed to admit it, I've been through extensive therapy. Yes, retail therapy that is. You can follow my high heel shoe collection on Instagram at Meredith Shoes 22. I really do dig my shoes. <laughs> I post pictures of them as I travel, speaking at conferences all around. Super fun. And if that doesn't tell you that I'm a marketer by the fact that my shoes have their own channel, then let me share with you my most coveted marketing credential. Yes, I bear a striking resemblance to Flo, the progressive girl. Right? Oh my word. When I got up on East Coast time this morning at 4 a.m. and put all of this work into my appearance, I can assure you what I was not going for was, hey, you know who you look like? Flo, the progressive girl. That's just awful, really. Uh, as Brittany mentioned, I am the very lucky and proud uh, co-founder and president of Meredith Communications. We, I founded it in 2001 at the beginning of the internet. Yes, I am that old. Uh, we manage uh, SEO and AdWords for home builders. To give you an idea, we're a team of eight. We're all virtual. On average, we build about 30 websites a year. We have 28 SEO clients on Retainer currently, 25 on AdWords, handful of Facebook ads, and, and so forth. So just to give you an idea of our stats and where we're at. But the stat that I'm the most proud of is this one, 90%. You see, we have an SEO client retention rate of 90%. And we've worked really hard to get it. And I'm here today to share with you the number one and only reason that you keep getting fired by your SEO clients. So if you're an agency in the house, this is right down your lane. If you are an uh, in-house marketer, your clients are your bosses and your decision makers. And I hope that you will get something from this as well. So how did we get to 90%? Well, we weren't always there. At the very beginning of the company, we churned and burned through SEO clients faster than Kim Kardashian could take a selfie. Yep, they would just love us and leave us. We could be getting them fantastic results. And agency folks with me in the room or in-house people, don't you sometimes feel completely invisible to your clients? Don't you feel like sometimes you are delivering incredible value? You're killing it in the rankings. You're giving them the reports. You're doing everything you can, and they just don't see you. And the next thing you know, because you can't get the owner's favorite phrase on page one, which, by the way, has zero search traffic, inner loop, Houston, new homes, hello, because you can't get the owner's favorite phrase on page one, you are fired. Well, we'd hit this brick wall, and I was sick and tired of it, and I sat down with my mastermind group, and I said, what do I need to do? You know, here's what I'm thinking. I'm just going to can SEO completely. I'm just going to focus on the full-time speaking gigs on digital marketing, write the books, whatever. And my mastermind group looked at me and said, okay, wait, wait, wait a minute. So you're telling me you're going to abandon the recurring revenue that's currently 40% of your business for up and down revenue for conferences that sometimes they pay you to speak and sometimes they don't. They were like, no, we're not doing that. I said, well, what are we doing? They said, well, how are you currently communicating your value? So we email them reports every month. Every month we produce PDF after PDF after PDF after PDF. When the Moz reports come into my inbox every month, it's a great day. And we send out those reports and they were like, yeah, so what? So they suggested, and we implemented several years ago, a proactive required meeting with our clients every single month. Now remember, I'm industry niched, so my clients aren't local to me necessarily. They're all over the country, so I can't necessarily get to their office. 
So we do a virtual meeting every single month, and I'm gonna break down for you how we do it. But the focus of this meeting, and what I hope for you to take away, whether you're in-house or agency, is that while we're spending time meeting with them, my focus is to educate them. I wanna inspire you, motivate you, help you think about your communication style today, and I want you to think about communicate to educate. Communicate to educate. Whether you're in-house or agency, the fact of the matter is your decision makers, your bosses, your peers, they have no idea what you're doing because they don't understand it. And how do we expect to keep them loyal to us if they don't understand. You see, we communicate for many, many different reasons. We communicate to inspire. We communicate to motivate. We communicate to inform. We communicate to persuade. We communicate to condescend. There are a lot of reasons we communicate but not all of them are with the focus of education. And what does it mean to actually educate someone and teach them what you do? Because in the 17 years that I've been running this agency, what I can tell you is I have never, ever, had a client call me, a potential new client call me and say, Meredith, we're thinking of leaving our current provider and coming over to you because we got so much information and we know everything that we're doing and we're so informed on everything that we're doing that we think we'll cancel and hire you. No, what do they say every time you get a new uh, lead in for your, your agency? They say, we don't what? We don't know what they're doing. And I think to myself, booyah, I'm about to get one and keep them because I will communicate to educate. So how does the monthly call work? All right, number one, this is critically important to the process. We proactively schedule these web conferences. All right, so I do not send them a link to a calendar app and put the work on them and say, here, you need to sign up for a time. No, our scheduler reaches out to them. And also, it's very clear to them that when they engage us, that this meeting with me is mandatory and required. Not everybody makes it every month, but most of them make it. So it sort of makes it sort of elite and exclusive that this is the part of doing business. This is the partnership that we've agreed to. So we proactively schedule. Number two, we remind and confirm the heck out of it. So we will send them a reminder 24 hours. We'll attach the reports. When we actually have the call, we're using Zoom currently. We've used GoToMeeting, we've used WebEx, we've used all the tools. Here's how the hour-long meeting works. I ask for an hour. Sometimes I only get a half an hour. I'll take 15 minutes. Because what I can prove time and time again is that the more I get to communicate, to educate with these folks, the longer they'll stay with us. Now. I did have this one incident this time, one time with the webcam. So most of the time, since we're a virtual team, I'm not necessarily webcam worthy every day that I'm working. So most of the time, I don't turn on the webcam and we just do it screen share, and, you know, audio, that type of thing. Well, early on in doing these, I hadn't realized yet that there was a setting where you could click, video doesn't automatically come on. I had just returned from the gym. Yeah, super sweaty, hair in a ponytail, ball cap, no makeup. The next thing I know is I hear the client coming through the call, hey, Meredith, hey, we can actually see you. And my instant reaction was this, you ready? Foom. <laughs> Down I went. Down I went below my desk. And then it occurred to me, they can see that I just ducked beneath my desk. And that's when the client goes like this, we can see you. Now I'm thinking, how do I get out of this? <laughs> like, I'm down here. <laughs> so I recover with the, oh, just drop my pin. <laughs> Hi guys, and I just kept going. Like, I don't care that you're seeing me in this state. So 
auto settings, no video automatically, very important. The way that the call breaks down, the first 30 minutes are on reporting. I go through the Google Analytics reports, through the Sprout Social reports, through the Moz reports. I live in this tool every single day, I love it. Uh, and then once we're done in that half, then the next half of the call is where the money is. You wanna hear where the money is? The second half of the 30 minutes is their open mic, I call it open mic time, and they get to ask me anything they want. If they don't want to talk about our reports and what we've done, I don't really care. They want to talk about this one particular sales associate they're having trouble with or this one product that isn't moving, I don't care. They get me during that time to brainstorm with them and figure out what they need and that's where we make the money. And lastly, I always end the call with action items not only for myself but for them because I want to transfer ownership. Look, I'm not marketing my business. I'm marketing their business. And if they want to sell more homes and make more money, then they've got to be actively involved with it. So I almost always think up of a homework assignment and I give it to them and I make them do it. It's awesome. So my wish for you, my hope for you for this call today, whether you're in-house or agency, is I want you to be bold. I want you to think big, and I want you to think about your communication style and really what are you trying to do. When you're talking to whether it's your in-house team or your boss or your agency and it's a client, are you talking to them to persuade them, to motivate them, to educate them? I think it's education that they need. They want to know how to do it. Debunk the myths. Tell them what SERP actually means. I get them in the crawl error reports and I'm like, see, this is what a 404 is. And, this, and you would think that they would just, no, they eat it up. They have no idea what I'm saying and they don't care. And if you have a fear that if you teach them too much, they're gonna do it without you, A, they can't, and B, they won't. Your value only goes up. The other thing I found is I share my frustrations with them. So frequently, if we've got a phrase that we have just been pulling our hair out, we've been working on it for months, we've been blogging on it, we've done all the right things, and it's still not moving in the right direction and getting the kind of results we want, I will say to them, this is so frustrating. And we talk about it openly. So communicate to educate. What's your next step? At this link, I put a uh, detailed doc of our monthly call process and procedure. There's a lot more to it than I actually described. Uh, also posted two of my marketing books for the PDFs if you want to download those. So those are for you. The other night, I was at Tijuana Flats. It's a kind of a funky, edgy Tex-Mex restaurant in Raleigh, North Carolina, where I'm out of and it was pouring outside. So we were, several of us were kind of trapped inside the restaurant. And I had left my phone in my car and I couldn't go get it because again, pouring. So I actually looked up from my table, imagine that, and looked around and I see this cute little family sitting over here jamming out to Purple Rain was going on on the overhead thing. And they're like, and their kids are looking at them like, I hate you. <laughs> you are really weird, right? And so the next thing I know, I'm like, oh, hey, yeah. And we're like, oh, yeah. And then the next thing I know, I look over here, and here's a table of, I'd say, college age, whatever, kind of that. And they're doing it. Mm, mm, mm. And we're all going. And then Purple Rain comes off, goes off, and my personal favorite, I am a child of the 80s. Oh. My guilty pleasure, Bon Jovi, comes on. And the next thing I hear over the thing, I hear, shot through the heart. And I'm like, you're to blame. And I look over, and the parents are doing it too, like this. And the kids are here doing it like this. And we're all like this. And then I thought to myself, I just got the closing to my speech at MozCon. 
yeah, baby, because I think these things, I think this way. Because you see, this is what it feels like. At the end of every day, my son comes home from the school, he's 10, his name is Brady, and he says, Mom, how many SEO calls today? And I say, whew, Brady, I did five today, I did four, I did three, however many it is. And I'm telling you, when I do those calls, and we are in sync, and we are in tune, and we have brainstormed, and we have clicked, and the clients are selling, and I'm getting paid, it's like we've got a jam session going on to shot through the heart. And I am not to blame. <laughs> and when all of that comes together, well, folks, that's simply fantastic.